or to FCS from 9 on until 11, until the service begins. I'll be there from 9 on along with Sherry and Melanie Sachs. I also just wanted to uh, let you know that um, we would love it if you would make lunch type things. Uh, Freeport Women's Club are bringing desserts, so um, if we could have lunch type items, that would be fabulous. <coughs> uh, the second thing is, Believe it or not, annual meeting of the church will be held on Sunday, February 7th. Please put it on your calendars because, as you know, we need a quorum. And that is 54 people. So uh, please uh, plan on coming to the annual meeting right after church. Thank you. Um, next weekend is Freeport Middle School school play. Um, we're performing Cinderella. Me and Maisie and Sydney are all in the show, and Bethany will be doing hair and makeup. <coughs> the show is on sa next Saturday at 2 and 7. Um, admission is $5. So come see Cinderella. Oh, it's in the F pack. And what part are you playing? I'm Cinderella. <laughs> Church, and I also have a few bags of granola for those that like granola. So all the proceeds will go to the church. Um, I just wanted to thank you again from Mission Committee for all the ongoing contributions to the clothing bins in the hall. Uh, Pastor Mayor picked up her bin this week and she sent me this email, which I wanted to read. Quote, I wish you folks could have been there outside the shelter last night in the dark and cold and seeing the hands you covered with your gloves. Such a blessing. Thank you from the cold ones, Pastor Mayor. I really wanted to pass that on. Um, we'll continue to collect the clothing all through you know, the next few weeks, so uh, let's keep the bins full. Um, second thing I want to mention is Freeport uh, Community Services are holding its annual freeze out. It's its 12th annual, and it is a, uh, an event that the um, um, FCS does where they stand outside for 12 hours on February 20th um, and collect uh, clothing, non-perishable food, and uh, financial contributions for fuel assistance. So as part of that effort, uh, they have left us a box, as they have done to a variety of churches and agencies in Freeport. The box is in the front hall there next to the clothing boxes and they're asking for contributions for of non-perishable food um, for the 20th. Um, third thing, um, we still need Tedford uh, sign up, a sign up sheet up in the community hall. And next Sunday, we're having a mission moment speaker from Tedford, who is the, one of the directors of Tedford to talk about the program. On the back of your bulletin, the events team meeting actually is not January 22nd, it is February 22nd. Excuse my typo on that one. Um, so that's next month. And today we will be having a Christian Ed meeting, and if you are at all interested in what Christian Ed does or interested in being on that committee, you are more than welcome to come and join us today after the service upstairs. Thank you. Good morning. I am selling Girl Scout cookies again today, so if you're interested, you can see me in the community hall after church. Thank you. Thank you, David, for announcing the Valentine Buffet next Sunday on the 31st. Should be a really fun cabin feeder event. I just wanted to remind you that Tom Wilbur will be there. And Dennis will be singing a collection of love songs. And I will be selling tickets after, and they're available in the office and at Wilbur's. Let us prepare ourselves to worship together.
church is not a bar, not a business, an ordinance, not an organization, it's a lie. If a church is not growing, it is dying. Your body has nine different systems, circular, respiratory, digestive, skeletal, etc. When these systems are all in balance, it produces health. But when the body gets out of balance, we call that disease. Likewise, when the body of Christ becomes unbalanced, disease occurs. Health and growth can only occur when everything is brought into balance. Let's prepare for worship.
Our lectionary today moves back to 1 Corinthians, and it's unusual because they're consecutive. Last week we were in uh, chapter 12, the first 11 chapters today, the first 11 verses today we pick up in verse 12. And looking ahead, next week begins with chapter 13, although I think I'm going in an Old Testament direction. These, this letter is always interesting, as is the whole of 1st and 2nd Corinthians. As I mentioned last week, we think it's probably five or six letters from Paul that he wrote to this church that were combined at some time in the past. Uh, the letters of Paul were then passed around. They may have come to one church, but a church near them may have said, could we read them? And a copy is sent there, and then another copy from another church is sent, and gradually over a 20-year period, these letters have come together in what is now known as part of the, of the New Testament, or Paul's epistles, or Paul's letters. What we don't have is the letters that were written to Paul that required his response. When you read today's passage and last week's passage, they are definitely responses to a particular situation. And the situation is, we think the church in Corinth were fighting with one another. Uh, we, churches have never done that since. <laughs> and, and what we have is they were fighting over gifts or contributions to the church. I can almost envision them writing to Paul saying, will you just tell us whose gifts are more important? And Paul then writes back his famous passage about the different parts of the body and the different parts of the church coming together into a whole. It is this wonderful passage. Next week he then goes on to write about uh, love which is used in just about every wedding service I have ever done, the first part of uh, chapter 13. But today, church unity, parts of the church, giving up your time to the church, which is, which is appropriate at this time of year. And so, Sue Ann will take us through a few verses. <coughs> starting with the Old Testament first, and that is Psalm 19, page 488 in the Pew The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet the voice goes out through all the earth, and the words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has sent a tent for the sun, which comes up like a bridegroom from his wedding candy, and like a strong man runs a course of joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise to simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The audience of the Lord are true, and the righteousness altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the drippings of honeycomb. Moreover, by then, <clears throat> excuse me, is your servant warm. In keeping them, there is a great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from your hidden faults. Keep me back from your servant, also insulted. Do not, do not let them have dominion over me, that I shall be blameless, and the innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted to, acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The second reading is the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 2, 12, sorry, I got 
For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of, of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we all were baptized into one body, the Jews or the Greeks, the slaves or free, and we all need to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body seem to be weaker, are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think are less honorable were clothed with great, greater honor and our less respectful members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectful members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, and that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then the deeds of power, then the gifts of healing, forms of assistance, form of leadership, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? To all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. This ends the reading for the day. <laughs>
don't say, my kingdom for a boy? <laughs> no males today. <laughs> Throw them out. And that's the end of that. Absolutely. I live my life with all females, yes. <laughs> what is something you're good at? You're good. All right, you can draw. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> what are some things that others of you are good at? What is it, Emily? You play the guitar. I know that. Football. Football. That's good, especially today. Daisy. <laughs> Skiing. You can ski. Abby. Um, field, field hockey. I thought you were going to go in a singing direction, but field hockey is good too. <laughs> the singing field hockey player. That's good. <laughs> Anybody else good at anything? What? Dance. I didn't hear that. Dance. dance? That's good. You can dance. <coughs> Math. Math? Ooh, I may need you someday. Um, snowboarding and ukulele. Snowboarding and ukulele. I'm envisioning those together. <laughs> <laughs> That's good too. We're all good at something. And everyone here is good at something. And you don't have to be good at everything. And that's the best part. We're all here together as a church, and it takes all different talents to make the church work. We need mathematicians, we need singers. Who knows, we may even need snowboarders and ukulele players. I know we're going to need a guitar or something. Dennis plays the guitar on occasion. And that's what Paul in his scripture lesson is talking about. The church is made up of people with differing gifts. And what you do is you take the best gift and you donate it to the church. So that's what we that's my lesson for you today. Let's all stand up and lead everyone in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And Sunday school awaits Bethany and Forrest. You guys are all coming with me for the first half of the part here. Are there any joys and concerns? Anyone would like to Forrest? What's your joy and concern? That was awful quick. I was very quick. Well, oh, I need to get a microphone. <laughs> well, I want to say that how blessed I feel to be able to work here. And I was reminded of it yesterday when I was at an Eastern Star service in Brunswick. I uh, several people come up to me, whether from Biddeford or Presque Isle, uh, and they, we were all, uh, that had received Eastern Star scholarships were to speak about how it's influenced us. Uh, and so I mentioned working here at the church, and I had several people come up to me uh, and share some sort of story about this church and how it's been involved in their lives. Uh, and so I just wanted to share that with everybody. And that was Sunday school. <laughs> yes, Forrest is applying to Andover Newton to go into ministry, so I am writing a letter of recommendation which hopefully, hopefully helps. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think of. No, no. prayers for Pastor Lynn Payton, who has been a substitute minister here at times. She had open heart surgery this past week, and she's still in main med. And it was successful, but she's had a little bit went back. That's what happens in the field. Anyway, please, prayers for her. Thank you. And also prayers for um, Edie Farnham, who fell 
last um, Monday down the stairs and has broken her nose and a couple bones in her face. I haven't had an update recently, but prayers for Edie. You may know more. Uh, she is undergoing therapy. Uh, she will then go to rehab uh, before being allowed to go home. She's going to be okay, but it's a, it's a journey. I heard a wonderful sound this week. My oncologist told me he didn't want to see me again until July. <laughs> I just wanted to add to what Mabel said, that if you are interested in following Lynn's progress, her daughter Susanna has returned to England but is still posting daily uh, updates on her, on Karen Bridge, and you just Google that, and then put in Lynn, L-I-N, P-E-Y-T-O-N, and there's also a nice picture of her. Thank you. Let's unite in silent prayer for our concerns to our Lord. Let us pray together this day. Lord God and our Heavenly Father, we come once again from our noisy worlds to this quiet place to worship you. In this hour of worship, we ask you to grant us the grace to listen so that our souls may welcome you into our lives. We bring to you this day our sins to be forgiven, our anxieties to be overcome, and our discouragements to be driven out. We pray to you for strength as we face life. And we bring our faith with us today. May we believe anew in you and in your eternal purposes, in the infinite value of the human soul, and in the coming of your kingdom. Now, Lord, we ask you to come into the hearts here of anyone who is in distress. Do not let the anxieties of this world overwhelm us and empower each of us to minister to those in need around us. We give thanks for our freedoms and pray for the safety of all those serving our nation. We pray for any named and any unnamed who are in need of your grace and care this day. And Lord, help us to be reborn and transformed and ultimately redeemed. May your spirit remain with us when we go our separate ways. May we find peace in our lives this day. All this we ask in the spirit of Christ. Amen.
faith. So now let us gather together in the spirit of giving, knowing often will not be taken. Today's day and age. 
and doctors and scientists have been working to further uh, transplant surgery. Now, research is underway to generate body parts from a, person, from a person's own DNA, and I find that fascinating. For example, we may not be able to do hands yet, but we are, have made good strides in doing noses and ears and blood vessels in laboratories. And the process is amazing. Doctors and scientists create what they call a scaffold, and I'm not sure why they call it that. It is a mold of sorts in the proper shape of, say, an ear or a, a nose, and on it they put some of the cells of the person and give it nutrition, and eventually they'll scrape it away if it's biodegradable, and what is left is an ear or a nose that is actually the same uh, cells as the person who is going to receive it just remarkable technology that I was reading about. And we can be thankful that medicine is working on these waves of the future. In today's epistle reading, the Apostle Paul uses the parts of the body as an illustration of what it means to be the church. And this brilliant writing of almost 2,000 years ago still speaks to our churches in today's day and age. He too is looking for ways for each part of the body to function best. And the text is a portion of Paul's letter to this church in the city of Corinth which he had founded about five years before. And like every church, then and now, it is made up of people with varying gifts. And we have heard some of the gifts that our young people will bring to churches in the future. And Paul says some have the gifts for preaching and some have the gifts for teaching. Others were gifted in mission and service. Some were gifted with great busyness sense and were good at generating wealth and others have the gift for caring for homes and family and one another. Rather than seeing these differences as a blessing, the Corinthian church, they were wondering which ones were better, which ones were more important. It seems from what we glean from Paul's writings, they were bickering about position and status, and some people were vying for power within the group. And we know this issue in our 21st century all too well. It happens at some time in just about every organization, including churches. We expect others to be just like us, and we want our unique giftedness to be appreciated and bring us some acclaim. It's easy to assume that what we read in 1 Corinthians is Paul's letter to a letter that was sent to him. And perhaps they did indeed ask him which role in the church was most important. But Paul, rather than ranking the gifts of the Spirit, he gives an illustration comparing each member of the church to a part of the human body. A group of believers, he says, is greater than the sum of any of its parts. And we are not a homogeneous group, but a group of different parts assembled by God to represent our church in our day and age. And we might not have the same gifts as members of this church in the past, but they are never the less important to how we uh, comprise our church today. And on the surface, it may appear that though a church is a loose collection of people that are united primarily or possibly by geography, we all come to the same church because we care 
and we bring our individual gifts with us. We may attend a class. We may just come to worship service. We may serve on boards and committees. And some people will say, for the most part, it stops there. We get involved in a church as much as we want or as little as we want. And sometimes in our day and age, there are many alternatives. And when a church no longer meets our needs for some reason, we detach. We may have a minority position. We might have gifts and interests that are very different from the norm. We may not like the pastor, although I can't believe that one. <laughs> or we may have a different type of theology. It's easy to detach from things in our world. People who didn't like our open and welcoming decisions, they just left. It was that simple. But Paul says, Paul says no. Paul says we might not all get along on every issue, but we come together. We come together as the body of Christ with our unique gifts. Church membership or affiliation is not a responsibility that we take lightly. It is different from a book club or a church or a gym membership. We don't just show up and expect to have our needs met. Church membership is also not like a loyalty card at the local grocery store. You don't get it punched every time you come through that door. We don't join just to receive frequent blessings. We are not stockholders whose time of service and financial invest investment necessarily gives us a say in saying what the church's direction will be. And today's reading, well, it demands a deeper commitment from each of us. In 1 Corinthians 12, the Bible teaches us that our connection to one another in Christ is so much more. We are ears, eyes, feet, and hands. We are a part of the body of Christ. We are dependent upon one another, and we function best when we realize that despite our differences, we are all working together for the same goal. And Paul, of course, would have had no idea about the wonderful things that science is doing to regenerate body parts today. Yet his illustration, it still works as the scaffold provides shape to regenerate a nose or an ear, so our individual gifts and abilities shape us uniquely for our tasks within the body of Christ. Our differences are not to be minimized, but they should be celebrated. Each of us has a different scaffold, which makes each of us and our gifts necessary to fulfill the work of the whole body of Christ in the world today. And yes, some of us are talkers, and others are thinkers, and we need those who are planners, and we especially need those who are doers. Some of us find energy while reaching out to the poor and the needy, and others when ministering to children through our Sunday school and youth programs. Some people are excited about music, and some are excited, excited about hearing the word of God, while others go outside of the church walls to love those who feel shut out. We think different, and we all are different, and that is okay because that is the way that God has designed us. God has assembled each of us into the body, and that's just how God wants it. Our task is to work together to serve Christ in all that we do. And our scaffolds, they don't have to be the same, but we need to remember that our DNA is. In the first 11 verses of 1 Corinthians that formed our scripture last week, 
Paul talks about that DNA, that which makes us one. While he acknowledges our differing gifts, he then reminds us that we come from the same spirit. We have the same spiritual DNA. We are made of cells from the same body, and when we come together as the church, we are more than our individual selves. We are part of that glorious organism that serves as Christ's representatives in this world. We may be shaped differently, but we are made of the same spiritual stuff. We are created in the image of God. We are redeemed by the blood of Christ, and we are strengthened and renewed and sent out into the world by the Holy Spirit. We all need to accept our roles here and celebrate others whose roles are different from <coughs> ours, and we all need to work for the common good of our calling within the Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate our congregation and our global church. We rejoice in our differences and remember that the gift of the Holy Spirit is living in each of us. Today we need to vow to work together to share the love of Jesus with our community and with our world. May the Lord be with you on your journeys through the coming week. And let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father and Lord God, we give thanks. We thank you for our uniqueness. We thank you for the gifts that you have given to us. Be with us now as we journey together to bring those gifts to the common good. In Christ's name we give thanks. Amen. The final hymn is number 598. Let us sing together glorious things of thee are spoken. Uh.
saw the voice of the Spirit when you might have been, let the joy of Christ fill your heart. And when you read and move, know that God created you, called you, and holds you. Go now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣ